name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by your gift alone, your faithful people render true and laudable service. Help us steadfastly to live in this life according to your promises 
and finally attain your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for this morning is from Isaiah 29. Is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest? In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. For the ruthless shall come to nothing, and the scoffer cease, and all who watch to do evil shall be cut off, who by a word make a man out to be an offender and lay a snare for him who reproves in the gate, and with an empty plea turn aside him who is in the right. Therefore, thus says the Lord who is Abraham, turning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall no more be ashamed, no more shall his face grow pale. For when he sees his children, the work of my hands in his midst, will sanctify my name. They will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. Those who go astray in spirit will come to understanding, and those who murmur will accept it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's epistle is from 2 Corinthians 3. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now, if the ministry of death, carved in letters on stone, came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze on Moses' face because of his glory, it was being brought to an end. Will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness was far exceeded in glory. Indeed, in this case, what once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what was being brought to an end came with glory, much more will was permanent. This is the word of God. This morning, the Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through the Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up into heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the gospel of the Lord. We 
We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace in the name of Jesus today. Amen. I'll invite you to look with me carefully at our gospel reading from Mark, even while I'll note that in your bulletin is a blue slip. And your blue slip is where a comment of any kind is welcomed. Perhaps it's a little like the evaluations you get just about everywhere you go these days, don't you? I, see, I think I see them almost every day now. You're invited to evaluate the restaurant you eat at, where you stay in a motel, when you fly on an airplane. In fact, the, the software that we'll use to take the video from this service and put it all together in a package and publish it on our YouTube channel asks for an evaluation every time I close the software. Kind of crazy. But people want to know, how is it going? And we're honestly used to doing evaluations. Your evaluation is important to business. It's important to others. How you view worship together and what we do together as a congregation is important to us. You're invited also with the crowd to make an evaluation in Mark chapter 17. They have seen Jesus lay hands on people and 
have seen them healed. We're going to invite you to make an evaluation with this crowd about all that's going on, especially about who Jesus is and what he's doing in your life at the moment. Thankfully, Jesus did more than they asked for a man who was deaf and mute, unable to hear, and then perhaps it's tied together with a tied-up tongue, if you will, that just can't speak correctly. Thankfully, there's some healing for that today, some technology that's being used to help those in this area. None of that was available at the time. And thankfully, Jesus, place of God, God coming to us, steps in and responds. He takes this man aside privately. Jesus wants to meet his need, and he wants to meet yours. You may not feel like you're deaf or mute or you have any impediment at all, but God knows that. In fact, he's making an evaluation of us. He understands the needs that we have or the issues that we have with being all that God created us to be, and he comes to us today as well. He understands our innermost need. I think this is a wonderful evaluation that comes. In verses 32 through 35, he responds, and then they respond back here in Mark, and they say that he has done all things well, even when he did some things that were different. You you realize they asked him just to lay his hands on He goes a little farther than that. He's very involved, we might say. And this, mind you, is the same body with the same hands that in Jerusalem will go to the cross. He is all in, some might say, with his body, with his being. And he goes beyond even what's asked with those who've seen a hand that heals. No, he does something even more unusual and strange. He says, takes his fingers and uh, a literal would be throws or thrust them into the ears of the man that cannot hear. He also spits and then touches the tongue of the man that cannot speak. Now, I don't know about you, but with the kids I just did camp, Bible camp with this summer, they probably all would have shuddered going, gross! He touches the guy on the tongue. Is that grosser than gross? Yeah, well, Jesus does something beyond what they ask. Presumably, he understands better than they do what this man needs. Such perhaps is the case for us also. Have you find this a little unnerving sometimes when people get too close? We have what we call our personal space. And some folks, you know, for some folks it's a foot or a foot and a half or two feet. Some people, when they talk to you and tell you and they're so excited, kind of like to get like right up in your face. <laughs> I mean, really close. Uh, for close friends, maybe that's okay. For someone you don't know, maybe not. Now, by the way, I can do a little training now for those who are greeters, and we're going to invite you to sign up. There's a sheet out there to sign up to be a greeter for new members, but for everyone to periodically come in just a few minutes early and be a greeter. But don't feel like you need to shake everybody's hands, especially since COVID, or kind of get up in their face. For some, that's intimidating or unnerving. But look at what Jesus does. He knows what this man needs. And we might say he got right up in this guy's business. That is, he knows our inner need. Not just that on the outside, that I'm getting old enough that my knees don't hold up as well as they used to. I don't do as much running on concrete or playing basketball as I used to. 
You'll find other issues as well as you age and get more gray hairs, like I have along the way. Some of you have a few more than I do along the way. But besides what's on the outside, Christ knows this man's inner need. And you and I both know it's more than his physical hearing, even though that is very real. God does want you healed bodily. And even though that isn't the primary thing we advertise as a church, if you come today, you'll be physically healed and walk out dancing. Well, maybe, and but maybe not. But he certainly has in mind that this man and everyone come to faith in who he really is that we make an evaluation and hopefully better than the evaluation of the Pharisees, as you may remember. They didn't like John the Baptist's baptism of repentance. They didn't like Jesus and what he did. In fact, some didn't even like it that he would go to a wedding and celebrate while John's disciples were known for fasting. They didn't like the way Jesus operated. In this case, it may be a little unnerving that he says, you have a deeper need. I need to get my fingers in your ears. (laughs) I need to go deeper. I need to get personal. Don't be afraid of Christ, of God's word and his Holy Spirit when we have these few moments for self-examination before confession of sins. We're preparing to receive his touch and we need him to come close to us. He does come to heal and ultimately he will heal your physical body. All those aches and pains you have for those of us who are getting uh, well along in years, getting older, he will heal those when he returns in glory. But he's also up to something here with this man and those who came in to hear. They finally made an evaluation. This guy does exceedingly more than anything we have ever seen. But maybe they didn't get the whole story yet. You know, at the end of Mark, Jesus is on the cross and the same fingers in hands that healed this man physically will be nailed to wood. Nailed for this man's salvation and for mine and for yours. Physically, he has a job to do and the healing that he needs done has to be done in Jerusalem as prophesied and done on a cross. Speaking of grosser than gross, And there is the sacrifice where his bodily fluids, even that idea is kind of gross, are poured out for our forgiveness. And can I add, ultimately for our entire healing. Because when he comes to receive those who have his name put upon them in baptism, those of you who trust in Jesus for forgiveness, he will change you and give you a glorified body He's not throwing this body away, but it says you'll be changed in a moment, Corinthians, in a twinkling of an eye. That glorified body will no longer have pain in healing or even in need to cry tears ever again. What a change God is up to. But he says, I need to go personal and I need to go deeper. And he does. And so he takes all of my failures, all of my problems, and yours also, all of your shortcomings, all of your sicknesses and diseases and illness, he takes to the cross so that ultimately he will heal. Even instead of physically first, it is spirit and soul and whole body. And then he comes to us in a strange way. Would you consider this a little bit unnerving and gross also? 
He gives you today his true body and blood for forgiveness of sins. He touches your tongue with his body and blood and offers it to you today. What a strange way to heal. What a strange way to give forgiveness. But this is what he promises, that he will take care of your needs, all of them. Forgiveness of sins and a glorified body that will be with him. A white robe is what this represents. He puts upon us to sit at his banquet table with him for eternity. Thanks be to God who does all things exceedingly well, completely satisfying so that the Father says, this is my beloved Son in him, I'm well pleased. So that when he comes in glory, he'll look at you who are wearing white, white robes of your baptism, washed clean by the blood of Jesus. And he says, well done, good and faithful servants. Through what Christ has done, and even as well, your response to him in faith. He changes us inside out. All glory be to him who heals, Jesus our Savior. Amen. So now this peace that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in faith in Christ to life everlasting. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.